live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Think of how a team usually finds out that they got invited to play in a bowl game. If you've ever watched the selection show for the college football playoff, you know exactly how it happens. The team is gathered together in a central spot inside the facility, and someone informs them that they are playing in that bowl. A lot of times, it will happen in a team meeting, where someone, whether it be a representative of the bowl, or the coach himself upon hearing the news, lets the team know on their destination. And well over 99% of the time, this is a complete non-story, because it's just about the same thing no matter where you go, or what school you look at. The team is inside the facility, and someone informs them of their spot, while they're expecting an announcement on said bowl spot to be made. Which is what makes this story all the more bizarre. Because this team right here is the 1993 California Golden Bears. They found out about their bowl game in a very different fashion that in many ways felt straight out of a movie. It was not at a team meeting, or in the facility, or in the locker room after the game, or through a reporter getting a source and spilling the beans, or anything that you might think of. Imagine the entire team finding out that they're going to be going bowling while in the middle of a wedding. Seriously. I'm not talking about one person being at a wedding on that day and getting a phone call during the wedding to let them know. I'm talking about, quite literally, the entire football team learning about their fate during the biggest moment of a man's life and having it interrupt the ceremony, especially since making the bowl game in the first place was a pleasant surprise. It sounds crazy. It sounds ridiculous. But it's completely true. Because this is the story behind the craziest bowl invitation in the nearly 140-year history of the California Golden Bears football program. Before I talk about the actual announcement in question and the crazy way that Cal found out about their bowl appearance, we need some context to understand just how Cal got to this point and how they were even in a position to make a bowl game in the first place. Entering the 1993 season, there weren't a whole lot of expectations for Cal's football team. In their first year in 1992, under head coach Keith Gilbertson, they went just 4-7 and seven and were second to last in the conference, only ahead of a winless Oregon State team in conference play. And even though the Golden Bears started the season ranked inside the top 25 of the AP poll, they quickly fell out of it following three straight losses to end the season, and following losses in six of their final seven games. After back-to-back -back seasons with a bowl win under head coach Bruce Snyder, before he left to take the job at Arizona State, the 1992 season was a massive disappointment, and many fans worried that it would be a sign of things to come heading into 1993. However, for Cal, the 1993 season was an awfully good one. After they went on the road on opening day to defeat a very good UCLA team at the Rose Bowl, they kept that momentum going for the rest of the year, and entering the final week of the regular season, had a very impressive 7-4 record. They spent about half the year inside the top 25 of the AP poll, being ranked as high as number 16 following a 5-0 start, and they had a nice ranked win in there against a number 13 ranked Arizona team, as well as a shocking victory over Oregon where they trailed 30-0 at one point and won the game 42-41. Nearly 30 years later, that game, known as the Miracle at Memorial, still lives on in Cal football history. As for how they went 7-4, it helped when they had some absolute playmakers on both sides of the ball who came up big when it mattered most. You had wide receiver Mike Caldwell, who in his final season, saved the best for last as he ended the year with 55 receptions for 962 yards and 7 touchdowns, all of which were career highs by at least two and a half times what his previous high was in that stat. He was also near the top 10 of the Pac-10 in just about every category, finishing 4th in receptions, 4th in receiving yards, 5th in receiving touchdowns, and 2nd in yards per catch by averaging 17 and a half yards per catch, which was only behind Deron Pointer of Washington State for the Pac-10 lead. You had running back Lindsey Chapman, who scored 17 touchdowns total, 
which led the Pac-10 and was fourth in the entire NCAA, while picking up over a thousand rushing yards, which was third best in the conference, and five yards per carry, which was fourth best. You had some great defenders, like defensive back Eric Zomal, who was fourth in the conference with four interceptions. And you had some really good special teams play, led in part by kicker Doug Bryan, who was one of the most accurate men in all of college football, hitting over 83% of his kicks, which was first in the Pac-10 and fifth in the NCAA. Long story short, Cal was an awfully good football team in 1993. And when they closed out the regular season with a dominant win on the road against Hawaii, taking it by a final score of 42-18, to all that Cal could do was wait for their bowl fate to be determined. The good news was that they were 8-4, doubling their win total from the previous season already. The bad news was that they did not have a bowl bid locked up or guaranteed by any means. Now, the good news was that the Pac-10 added a fourth team that was eligible to make it to a bowl game. As beginning in 1993, the Alma Bowl, a new game held in San Antonio, would take a team from the Pac-10 to go up against a team from the Southwest Conference. That means that the first place team would go to the Rose Bowl, the second place team would go to a bowl coalition game, which this year turned out to be the Fiesta Bowl, the third place team would go to the Freedom Bowl, and the fourth place team would go to the Alamo Bowl. The bad news was that while the first three spots were locked in, with UCLA playing in the Rose Bowl, Arizona playing in the Fiesta Bowl, and USC playing in the Freedom Bowl, the fourth spot was a true toss-up. Under normal circumstances, it would have gone to Washington, who came in fourth place and went five and three. However, they were not eligible to make a bowl game due to sanctions, as they were serving the first of a two-year bowl ban. But now, it was either Cal's Bowl to make, or Arizona State's Bowl to make, as both teams were 4-4 four and four in conference play. And this meant that all they could do was wait. On one hand, the Golden Bears had the better overall record, going 8-4 compared to 6-5 for the Sun Devils, and against the three co-champions of the conference in Arizona, UCLA, and USC, they did better, going 2-1 against the cream of the crop, compared to Arizona State, who went just one and one. On the other hand, when the two teams met head to head, it was an absolute curb stopping on the part of ASU, as the Sun Devils won by a final score of 41 to nothing in a game that was not even the slightest bit competitive. Truly, no one knew who was going to get the fourth and final spot in bowl season for the Pac-10, who was going to keep their season alive, and who was going to be watching bowl season on the couch back at home. But for the players on Cal, that wasn't the only question on their mind during this time. Because their other question was, quite simply, what are we going to do about this wedding? Allow me to explain. When the schedule for the 1993 season came out, and the season finale was announced as Cal traveling on the road to take on Hawaii, offensive lineman Todd Blackwell decided that it would be a great idea to get married that weekend. What better place to do a destination wedding than in Hawaii? With that, he decided to marry Jennifer Shire in the courtyard of the Hilton Hawaiian Village on Sunday, November 28th, one day after their team's game against Hawaii. Quite the weekend to have. As a senior, play your last ever regular season game on Saturday and get married on Sunday. And because Blackwell had a great relationship with his teammates, Cal decided that instead of flying back immediately after the game, like most teams do and like he would usually do, that they would spend the entire weekend in Hawaii instead, and would all attend his wedding. The players and the coaches would be there, as Blackwell said, I do, and officially got married to the love of his life. And by all accounts, the wedding was great, and went off without a hitch. Blackwell set out getting married in Hawaii in front of all of his teammates, to win a big game and then have the whole team at your wedding afterwards, not too many people can say that. That will definitely be a memory I never, never lose. However, there was just one small problem with the wedding date. Because the date of the wedding, November 28th, was the same day that Cal, along with a whole bunch of other teams, would find out their bull fates. And this meant that at the same exact time that the wedding was happening, 
and the coaches were paying attention to that, they had to leave the room to be on the phone and figure out what was going on and what was happening on the mainland. Essentially, it was the most chaotic wedding ever. The guests were half paying attention to the actual ceremony and were half paying attention to what their winner was going to look like and if they were going to have a chance to play one more game. Especially because, again, this was by no means a guarantee that Cal would go bowling. As running back Lindsey Chapman said on all of this, there's doubt in your mind because you don't know how these things go. It's a lot of politics. The ceremony was happening with the players worrying and the coaches seemingly hopping in and out. Blackwell and Shire said, I do. But still, no word on what was happening with the bowl picture. And then, quite literally, moments after Blackwell kissed the bride and was taking pictures with his wife, the coaching staff came running out of the hotel, screaming and celebrating what they just heard. Because they yelled in excitement, interrupting the tail end of the wedding, we're going to the Alamo Bowl. And now, the party was really on. As quarterback Dave Barr said on all of that, it had been interesting to see that happen a few minutes earlier. Talk about the weirdest wedding ever, but what an unforgettable experience that I'm pretty sure no other married person can say happened at their wedding. It was going to be a happy flight back to the mainland, as Cal found out that they'd be playing in the inaugural Alamo Bowl down in San Antonio against Iowa. I should note that even though I said before that the Bowl was supposed to take a team out of the Southwest Conference as the opponent for the Pac-10, the Southwest Conference did not have enough Bowl-eligible teams that year, so they took Iowa out of the Big Ten. And I think it's safe to say that the celebration wasn't for nothing, as when they played on New Year's Eve against the Hawkeyes, they capped off a great season with an absolutely dominant 37-3 victory in front of a national television audience on ESPN. The win was so good and so impressive that it propelled them into the top 25 of the AP poll to end the season, making it just the second time since America's Bicentennial in 1976, and just the third time since Hawaii and Alaska became states in 1959 that Cal ended the season ranked by the Associated Press. It was also just the third time since World War II started that Cal won a bowl game. Not a bad way to end your year, if I do say so myself. Talk about ending 1993 with a bang. There are many fun and unique ways that teams find out that they're going bowling and get to celebrate their hard work and the continuation of their season to play one more game for their school. But I'm not sure a whole lot can top how Cal found out about their bowl game and their spot in the Alamo Bowl in 1993. To do it on the beach in Hawaii in the middle of watching one of your teammates get married to the love of his life? What a moment. Because just like Blackwell said to his wife, when the Cal football team was asked at the same exact time whether they would accept an invite to the inaugural Alamo Bowl in sickness and in health, head coach Keith Gilbertson said, I do. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.